few of us are on our way home from fishing the Rafferty Reservoir Walleye Cup this weekend. And uh, before we head back to Manitoba, we wanted to try fishing on Boundary. We're actually going to put uh, young Steve Sasaki up to the task of uh, taking us on a new body of water that none of us have ever been on. And it's uh, a reservoir in Saskatchewan and it's apparently, one, if not one of the only, it is the only lake or reservoir that has largemouth bass in it in Saskatchewan. So we're going to basically just uh, unleash Steve on this lake and see what he can figure out. So what do you think about this idea, Steve? It's an interesting concept. It's going to be fun to see if we can put you guys on some fish. I have heard that uh, the average size of largemouth in here is bigger than what most people anticipated initially, and uh, that it's a reservoir system, which I've never fished before. So uh, the water temperature in early spring is already in the high 60s. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the fish are set up and you know where they're going to be. We invited you to come with us because you're a pretty accomplished bass angler and we're hoping that uh, we'll head out on the water today and we can tap into some of your knowledge to figure out where we're going to find largemouth on this body of water that none of us have ever seen before. Yeah, for sure. What are your initial thoughts? What are we going to look for? Well, knowing the, the water temperatures, I think what we're going to look for is um, isolated weed patches or weed lines uh, anywhere from the four to seven foot mark. Uh, with a little bit of warm water or uh, deep water close by and we're going to see if we can, you know, we'll start at the weed edges and then move our way in deeper as we go. So knowing what you know about what we've seen already for water temperature, like what do you think the bass are actually doing? Well, they're post spawn right now, so, so they should be by far done those already, so they should be moving back out into the, uh, I don't want to say the, the, the edges of the bays going in, but I mean, that's a good place to start. Uh, typically, when I, when I bass fishing on a lake that I've never done before, the water temperatures is a good dictation of where they're going to be. And then what I do is I take it one step back from there and I start at that point and work in. Today, because it's the temperatures and because of the structure that we're going to be looking, you know, we're going to be trying to fish, my two uh, presentations that I'll be using today is a weightless Senko, wacky rig, and a uh, some sort of uh, Texas rig creature bait. Um, most likely it'll be a chicker craw or something from Reaction Innovations. So for you, plastics is the way that you'd want to tackle yeah, this. Yeah, absolutely. Style. Yeah, it's uh, probably the most versatile. You can, because you're using a little heavier weight, you can fish them relatively quickly. Um, you know, it's up, down, it's quick, and it's effective. I mean, you know, lots of bass love creature baits, so. Is there any, um, any chance today that we throw some minnow baits? You know, we could try, you know, it depends on the structures, but if we can find a nice rock point with a little bit of weed close by, I really wouldn't mind throwing some uh, some X wraps or some shadow wraps. What do you think about the possibilities for trying some top water? It's we uh, so my dad came with us today, and he's going to be in another boat, and I've actually armed him with a frog. Uh, so you know, it's good. We've got a few people running a, a few different baits. Uh, you know, when we're when you're fishing like this, a lot of times it's good to have variation and, and people trying different stuff. So. For sure, you know, if it starts to go on the frog bite, then I mean, it's, man, there's no better way to catch largemouth than on a frog. All right.
nice fish, you know, three pounder probably. It hit right on that fall. And it's funny, Bruce was talking to me about, um, you know, being so close. Obviously this fish wasn't very spooked. So let's get this back in the water. Steve, what's with the Hollywood hook sets? One of the things that uh, a lot of other anglers that don't do a lot of largemouth fishing laugh at is the, the pronounced hook set that largemouth bass fishermen have. And there's actually a reason for that. When you're fishing in a, in a this isn't so much heavy cover, but when you're fishing in a weed cover and, and you're fishing a lot of grass mats and such, what happens is that, that really strong hook set gets the fish pointed the head, it jerks the head and points it in the same direction that your line is going, so that it actually brings them out of whatever cover they're in. And so what happens is if you don't do a hook set like that with, with a really strong pull, that fish will dive back down and oftentimes will wrap you around a lot of weed and, and you'll never get them out. You know, that's a nice weed line too. Like, you know, one of the things that anglers often get caught up in is, you know, seeing a shoreline or a weed line that looks really good and it goes for 600 yards. Um, but when you're when you're tasked with catching fish in a short time period, you know, that could be a killer for you. Be a killer for anybody. If you notice there's so much of this down the shoreline, oftentimes you're fishing for one or two fish and you know a mile long worth of shoreline, it's, it's, it's uh, not what they call a high percentage spot. So if you catch one, be happy, but if you were in a tournament situation, uh, this is not something I would look at unless I knew that there were certain differences along the shoreline. Anomalies like maybe a lay down or a big rock or a boulder pile or something just to help concentrate those fish. So we're not gonna run down the, the whole shoreline here, but you know, take a few few flips just to get, you know, to see what's there. So Steve, when we're on new water to you, uh, like the electronics have come a long way in a short period of time here. So what do you tend to focus on? Well, this, this lake is a little different in, in the way that it sets up, but you know when you're driving along and and you know there is a 500-yard stretch of, of shoreline where there's a lot of good-looking weed cover, um, and you don't want to fish it. One of the things that I used to do was, or still do, is I drive along that shoreline and look for any anomalies that are along that shoreline, whether it be a you know a sunken uh, log or a stump or maybe a boulder. And what it does is it just helps position those fish as you know we know that bass are opportunistic and they like to ambush their prey so those sorts of things offer that uh, dynamic and so side imaging on the hummingbird has become uh, almost a staple in my boat uh, just driving down a shoreline you can see you know things that you wouldn't have normally found unless you fished absolutely every inch of that so it's it's changed the game considerably Putting your bait in the water quietly is actually key in a lot of times. And so when you're, you know, when you're typically casting from 50, 60 yards away, it's not conducive to putting that bait in the water quietly. So, you know, the other thing is, is that when you're fishing weed lines and, and weed pockets, 
your 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 pitches actually have to be pretty pinpoint you know accurate because you're placing them in areas where sometimes it's only a coffee can wide and so yeah just you know from that standpoint it, it's it's you just got to be a little closer than farther one thing i haven't seen is a lot of laydowns on this lake yet a lot of structure other than weed lines so maybe we'll have to go look for some uh, docks or something little So we were just fishing a shoreline with a lot of really good cover. Uh, you know, trees that were leaning over. There was a bunch of wood in, in the shoreline. So uh, we just I flipped right in and actually pitched a pit, 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 it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually family show, family show. I, I pitched it right underneath one of the trees where the branches were leaning over, creating shade, and, and this little guy bit. What a fun day of fishing at Boundary Dam Reservoir. We landed plenty of largemouth, mostly tucked tight into weed edges. We caught on a few different presentations too, but the wacky rigged worm was definitely our hot bait. Now that we've been to Boundary, we can't wait to go back. This will definitely become a regular stop for us anytime we're fishing on the Saskatchewan side of the border.